Hello, Tarantula Sam here and welcome to my channel. Just wanted to preface this video real quick by saying that this is not a video for the avid tarantula keeper, but rather for somebody who finds himself walking through Petco, fascinated by one of these tarantula huts, and then later walking out of the store with one or two or maybe three of these and likely a lot of bad advice. And now you're wondering what you've gotten yourself into. Um, also, just wanted to note real quick my thoughts on Petco carrying these tarantula huts. I know that these tarantula huts are in a pilot program, and I know that these, uh, at least I understand that these are all captive bred spiderlings, which is a good thing. Um, however, I do understand that a lot of hobbyists are very opposed to Petco carrying any of these, and there are some good reasons for that. Uh, first, I know that employees can be negligent, and these can end up dead on uh, store shelves. These containers are not generally good containers to keep spiderlings in, um, and should you should note that these are definitely temporary containers also uh, there are a lot of spiderlings that uh, they sell as options that are not beginner spiderlings employees are not knowledgeable about this and people have the potential to walk out with an advanced spiderling um, that they uh, should probably not be ke keeping as a first tarantula and I think this is very, very irresponsible for Petco to do this, especially since there is no warning labels at all on those species. Um, I see it as an option. I think it's probably the worst option of where to get spiderlings. Obviously, you can see I've got three here. It happens to be my only option in my area to pick up spiderlings if I want to see them in person before buying them. I think better options would be a mom-and-pop store that sells tarantulas, uh, and has knowledgeable staff. Another good option would be to buy from a reputable online breeder, um, or if you're lucky enough to have a breeder in your area, that'd be great. Um, two breeders that I've dealt with that have been great are Paul Becker over at PetCenterUSA.net, and I have had a spiderling arrive safe and sound from Jamie's Tarantulas as well, though she ships USPS, which I'm very unimpressed by. Um, so that's uh, kind of my little opening spiel. And uh, now I will jump into what to do next if you find that you have brought one of these home. Okay, so the first thing you should do once you've purchased one of these, or if you insist on purchasing one of these from Petco, is find out what you're purchasing. Do some research. Um, they sell many, many, many different types of tarantulas uh, at Petco uh, in these uh, tarantula huts, and they all have very, very different characteristics. Um, Quick rant, there are mistakes on these containers, so note that not all of these, when they grow up, will look like the pictures. For example, this Mexican red leg tarantula, or Brachypelma amelia, is paired with a Brachypelma smithi, so it will not look the same as the picture. Um, more egregious of an error is this one that I've purchased here, which is labeled as three different tarantulas, actually, so it's a mystery to me. It's labeled the Brazilian giant salmon is the common name, a P. muticus for the scientific name, which is actually a king baboon, and it has a picture of an Acanthus scuria geniculata. So checked as three spiders. I won't know what it is till it grows up. I do suspect that it might be the giant salmon, uh, in which case it should be labeled as the Lacidora parahibana. Um, note that, that Petco's got it split out for you just generally, very generally here as tropical species and temperate species. Um, tropical like it a little more humid, temperate like it a little bit drier. Um, but there are many, many, many other differences as well. Some of these are arboreals, for example, the avicularia avicularia, like they like to live in trees, they like taller containers. Some like uh, uh, are terrestrial, they like to live on the ground, and some like to live under the ground, uh, or su subterranean species. Um, so do try and find that out so you can adequately house your uh, spider. Also, uh, note that some of these are old world spiders and some of these are new world spiders. And with these spiders come different characteristics. For example, pretty much all of the new world species throw arc decaying hairs, which can be very irritating once they grow older and they, if the hairs get in your skin and can be dangerous if they get in your eyes. So do be safe uh, with those and find out what exactly arc decaying hairs are if you have a new world species. Um, also note that... Uh, some of these species will grow very fast, others will grow very slow. So there's different growth rates on these. For example, king baboon tarantula here will grow very, very slow. And some of these others, like uh, the Acanthus gracie will grow very fast. And some of them will grow somewhere in between. 
So do note that. Um, another thing I just want to talk about here real quick with these is some of these are definitely beginner species that most people recommend. Others are definitely not. Uh, just for those of you uh, who want to know, I will give you my recommendations for beginners, and those will be any of these amphonopelmas they got on here, the Oklahoma Brown, Texas Tan, the Costa Rican Striped Knee, Great Beginner Tarantulas, any of the Brachypelmas, the Mexican Red Rump, Mexican Red Leg, the Condor and Curly Hair, Great Beginner Species, um, and then as well, they've got some of the Gramostolas on here as well, the Chaco Golden Knee and the Rose Hair Tarantula, which are good beginner tarantulas. Um, another one that generally considered a good uh, beginner tarantula is the Vicularia vicularia or the pink toe. Um, it probably is a little bit more difficult to take care of than these others I've mentioned, though, as far as uh, keeping it alive as a spiderling. Um, so some of these, as I mentioned, are very bad beginner tarantulas, and they're not labeled. Uh, this one, for example, no warning label, and this one is a uh, Salmopius cambridgei. It uh, is known to bite and be defensive, and it's also very, very fast. Um, some of these others are uh, much worse than that one, like any of these Pocleotheria ori oriental tarantulas. Very fast, very, very powerful bite. Could potentially put you in the hospital if you get bitten. Same with this uh, orange baboon tarantula, nicknamed the orange bitey thingy. Uh, King Baboon Tarantula, very powerful bite, uh, very strong venom. So do note that uh, their venom levels are going to be different, and uh, some of these are most definitely not recommended for beginners, and there are no warning levels l labels on these containers telling you that. Anyways, so now uh, that I've talked about that, I kind of want to jump in and show you what to do once you've brought one of these homes as far as caring for them. Okay, so once you've figured out what kind of spiderling you've purchased and what its needs are, you're going to want to rehouse it. I think that these containers are way too big, and also the substrate is just ridiculous. A piece of foam, I think it's inadequate, and I know a lot of people agree with me. Um, so once you've researched what kind it is, you'll know whether it's an arboreal. If it is an arboreal, you'll want it in something taller and narrower, or uh, if it's a terrestrial. And if that's the case, you'll want it in something uh, like this deli cup or this uh, container here. I will put a link in the description on how on a video I've done on how to make these nicer ones if you want a nicer container. And I will upload a video on how to make these. Um, a substitute for these instead of a uh, deli cup for arboreal. So you want like a pill vial with some holes drilled in it. Um, but what you'll want to do, so with the holes on these, is you'll want some holes around the sides, not the top. Uh, you want cross ventilation, not top ventilation. And you want to put some substrate in the bottom. Substrate on these that I've been using and having great luck with is vermiculite mixed with cocoa fiber. You can get cocoa fiber at the pet store. You can get vermiculite at uh, uh, like a hardware store. I got mine at Ace Hardware. I know a lot of gardening centers carry it as well. Just make sure it's pure vermiculite and doesn't have any additives or pesticides. Um, next uh, thing you'll do is once you get it all set up um, is you will uh, want to coax out the spiderling and get it in the in the new enclosure. Doing that can be tricky. They're fast and it's hard to get them out sometimes. So what you want to do is actually do that in a large Tupperware or something that if they do get out, they'll get out into a larger container and not out across the floor or across your table. Um, I use a uh, like a drinking straw that's in the paper still to coax it out. I know some people use like a, a paintbrush with soft bristles just to gently coax it out. Once you get it into the new container, you'll want to close the lid after you're sure that this spider is clear. Um, so that's uh, pretty much all uh, you need to know for the rehousing. Um, and now I will jump in and talk about just general care on these guys. Okay, so now that I've told you my uh, thoughts on rehousing these things, the next thing you'll want to do is you will want to uh, know how to keep it alive, basically, which is pretty easy to care for these little guys. Um, they need three basic things. They need to be kept at a constant temperature that's appropriate for them. They need to be kept uh, fed, and they need to be kept uh, with the proper amount of humidity and moisture. Um, so with the uh, uh, amount of water that you give them, what you'll want to do, and what I do, and it works great for me, is I use a water dropper to drip some water beads on the side of the container, and the spider will come along and drink those if it wants it. If not, they evaporate and provide some humidity for it. 
Um, and for all my spiderlings as well, what I'll do is I'll mist the lid of the container and I'll put the lid back on. I never mist the actual container with the spider in it. Do not mist the spider directly ever. Um, I do this about twice a week and uh, I've had good luck with that. I let the container dry out kind of in between mists and I just make sure in the meantime that the spider has so kind of the water beads that available to it to, to drink from if they want. Um, they also need to be fed. As little tiny spiderlings, uh, you're kind of limited on options. You don't want to feed them large prey. They're really small spiderlings. I feed these flightless fruit flies. Uh, I'll drop two to three times a week. I'll drop some of these in, about five or six, and the spiderling will go pick them up. Uh, and uh, I've had them uh, grown and molting and doing just fine on those. Once they get bigger, I will start introducing small crickets. Um, you do want to note if they start refusing food, you'll want to take the food out. And once they've eaten, if you can see the remains of the food, you'll want to take that out as well. Keep their container clean, like a small pair of tweezers or something. Um, so the last thing uh, just to talk briefly about is keeping them at a proper temperature. Uh, I keep all my tarantulas between 80 and 83 degrees. Uh, I think you're probably fine if you keep them at least above 76. Don't keep them in direct sunlight. Don't keep them under an air vent. Um, I keep mine all in what I, uh, a little kind of microclimate enclosure. I have not uploaded a video on this yet, and I will be in the near future, but I'll kind of go show you that and give you a preview uh, right now of what I keep those in. Um, keep it up here on my fireplace mantle. This is the microclimate enclosure I keep. There's a heater at the back, that uh, ZooMed heater, uh, with uh, all the spiderling containers. And then it's vented on the sides. Give it some cross ventilation on the container as well. It has a temperature gauge to gauge it. As you can see, we're at 80.4 right now, which I'm pretty happy with. Um, now, I just wanted to show you the actual spiders that I purchased, if we can find them. So, right here on the side, I've got my Salmopius Cambridge Eye, or the Trinidad Chevron Tarantula. It is an arboreal, and it only has seven legs, so we named it seven. Um, if your spiderling is missing a leg, uh, it will grow back uh, when it starts molting. Uh, as a spiderling, it'll grow back much faster than if it loses a leg as an adult. I'm not sure how it lost it, but... Uh, uh, I expect that it'll be just fine. Um, this is my, uh, if you can see, kind of blends in there right at the base of that cup and fork insignia is the mystery tarantula. I think that it's probably a La Ciadora par hibana. Um, but that is him or her. And then over here is my Brachytoma baggins, which is a digger, as you can see, the holes that it digs along the side. Um, and it is, let's see if we can find it, it's down in one of the holes. Kind of hard to see, but it's right there, that kind of dark blurry spot. Yeah, it's not focusing very well, and the container's kind of foggy, but it's down in that hole. But anyways, I hope that this video wasn't too long-winded, and I hope it was helpful to any of you that have come home with one of these tarantula huts and then thought, what do I do with this? So... Anyways, if you guys like uh, these kind of videos on tarantulas, I try to upload to this channel. It is a newer channel. Uh, you can go ahead and like and subscribe and uh, wait for more videos. Thanks.